welcome back, everybody. Hope you uh, enjoyed uh, a nice cup of coffee and uh, catching up with old friends and new. Um, Catherine and I had a, a, a conversation during conversation. It's always hard to get people back from the, from the coffee break. We'll just start talking and see if anybody exactly. turns up, really. Um, so uh, I'm delighted uh, for the next uh, sort of 15 minutes or so to be uh, talking to Catherine Ruggiero Luvisi, who is CEO of Modern Meadow. Correct. And I probably mispronounced your surname. It's okay. Don't worry. You're British. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm used yeah. to it. No, <laughs> nobody to expects it. the Brits to make their pronunciations. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> so um, I'm a long time uh, admirer of, of Modern Meadow. Um, and I know you're doing some, some sort of fantastic things. And I know you're in a certain part of your journey that maybe people who are uh, sort of uh, behind uh, your journey would, uh, would like to, to hear about and learn from. So, first of all, who is Modern Meadow? Um, so that's an interesting question because we have evolved. We are a company that is about 10 years old and uh, we started really about being a leather replacement company and today we are an R&D platform. And our expertise is in protein and protein application. So by, by trialing and not succeeding so much, we learn a lot about protein. Um, and, and today we have the ability to use uh, or to develop protein, either use plant-based protein or recombinant protein that we design and engineer and eventually produce via fermentation. Uh, we have the ability to have real-world impact in multiple vertical, um, and that is in the textile industry, in the beauty, and the biomed, but we do that through partnership. So really we are an horizontal company, an R&D company, and then we partner to go down those different verticals. Okay. And uh, try to phrase this without being rude. I, there's a few companies that do something similar, possibly. Sure. So what differentiates Modern Meadow? So I think, don't tip to, I think it's good that some of us are, have some overlap. I mean, basically what we collectively are trying to do today is change the entire worldwide economy. So if there is more than one company to do it, that's great. Uh, the, the, the difference in our case, or, or what we feel that is a little bit unique about us, is because we are a mix of biology and material science. So we, we understand uh, what are the problems in the different verticals that we are you know, prioritizing. In the case here, it's textile, it's beauty, or it's biomed. And basically, we define, we select, we purify, or we engineer protein, and we combine them with polymer, with biopolymer. Um, and that's a little bit unique, because this is kind of creating um, a, what we call bioalloy. And, and if you know what an alloy is, is basically combining ingredients or things together basically to create additional property that the individual ingredient didn't have. So we have uh, IPs on multiple alloys with multiple um, um, uh, polymer that allows us to quote unquote have those Lego systems which we rearrange constantly to tackle many different problems around mul multiple verticals. So in the textile industry, for example, we have a, a, we, we have a bio alloy that we use that allows for material to look like this one, which is coated textile, um, alternative material. Um, it's, it's also, we can do diability much more efficiently. We can also improve abrasion, breathability, because all of um, protein is an amazing molecule that allows for all those uh, properties to be enhanced when you apply them to textile. Okay, and we've heard a, a, a couple of times already this morning about sort of the importance of partnerships and collaboration. Mm -hmm. um, how, yeah, how important has that been in terms of getting your technology to market or, or have you just done it on your own? No, we're not vertical, uh, and we have identified we cannot be good at everything. We, we, and the other thing is we have to move the entire, I know, you know a lot of us talk about bioeconomy, et cetera, et cetera, but it's fundamentally we have to move the entire world in that direction, so we may as well do it together versus in our corner. Uh, the first place where we are uh, partnering is inside Monometo. Uh, we are, you know, 100 people or so, 70% is our scientists, so biology, material science, and engineer, and all the things you can imagine. But also you have people who have uh, 
um, I would say, operational experience like myself. So bring um, science to market and, and, and do that fast because um, we don't have the luxury to wait uh, another 20, 40 years. So what we do is we identify what are the problems that we want to tackle based on the property of our alloy and then we go after through partnership. So in the, in the material space, we have um, partnership, for example, with one of the best coated textile manufacturer in the world, which is called Limonta. Um, some of you know it, uh, Northern Italy. We also have a partnership with one of the best um, uh, par uh, manufacturer, design and manufacturer of breathable material, which is Syntex in Taiwan. Uh, we have signed a partnership with Ultrafabric, uh, which is doing a lot of interior material. Um, but also in the beauty space, we have partnership with Colmar and Ivonic. So why is that important is, first of all, we don't invest in steel. We invest in, in human capital. We invest in people. And the way we go down the vertical is through those partners because those partners have, um, like us, they believe in, in performance and they believe in, in sustainability. Um, and they do that at scale. For us to reinvest in all those equipments would take us decades and billions of dollars when you have actually people who do it extremely well. Um, those partners also have an understanding of the market fit. So, you know, sometimes you are in, a little bit in your, in your labs and you're having fun and then you go to market and people are like, well, that's intellectually interesting, but completely irrelevant. Um, so <laughs> those, those partners really tell you what are the problem that really needs to be tackled at first. Um, and what are the ones that are going to repay pay back, both on a, on a performance standpoint and on a sustainability standpoint? The other thing is product fit is something that, as we all know, is essential to, to appear but to continue and to exist. And those partners keep on doing the iteration and the evolution of all of technology in a very agile way. To spend R&D dollars to do different material of different color, texture, uh, appearance, whatever, would be a bit an overkill. When you have operators that do that on a daily, a daily, you know, daily way. So um, again, partnerships allows for relevancy, allows for agility, allows for speed to market, allows to also, uh, once you're in, you're in. Um, and and uh, it also, those guys, I, I do believe, have such a reputation uh, and track record that it gives to brand a certain level of comfort in understanding what is the quality of the material coming out of their, of their facilities. Very interesting. The, the, the first thing you said there, which was the first partnership, was internal. Yes. That's... You know, that, uh, that, that's pretty cool because and especially, you know, I'm, I'm sort of from not within this sector, if you like. But, you know, when you scale and you start bringing business people into a science environment, you know, we, we mm -hmm. try and tackle that in this, in this event sometimes, right? Because it's about commercialization. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's not necessarily a skill set that the founders of the business might necessarily have. So, the, it, it, you know, that's an important part yeah, of your I mean, scale-up journey? Yes, I think we went from what we call an R&D to a commercialized uh, R&D organization or commercializing R&D organization. Because, um, but what is interesting is most of our um, uh, scientists may be, again, engineer or, or, or in, in biology, or they want to see their product in market. They want to see their innovation in the market. So they are, uh, at, at heart, they are you know, commercial people. Um, so the, the only thing is it's true, the speed and the iteration that comes after once you're out of the, of the, of the building. As I said to them, you know, everybody's looking at the finish line, oh, we are in market. I'm like, no, that's just the beginning. Now we'll come to the journey where it's kind of churning and that's why you have to have those partners to make sure you, are, you remain relevant and you remain um, uh, fast enough to keep up with what's happening. Yeah. And so let, let's talk about the, uh, the exciting <coughs> launch with, with Tory Birch and tell us mm -hmm. a bit more about how partnerships contributed to the launch of Ella Bio. So, so first of all, all the, thing, the thing you see on the slide here is our product that we do. Uh, but it's true, uh, and actually it's, you know, it's here. It's a lot of people saying, you know, bio-innovators are kind of talkers and, you know, the endless runway of, of pilot. This is the real thing. You can touch it, you can buy it. I left the price tag just in case. Um, um, I don't, pay, you know, don't take any commission on it. Uh, but um, it, it, is, it is real. Um, it, I think that there is a tremendous learning. We've had few, par few partnerships with brand before. And for us, we are B to B to B to C. So we are like up the value chain, right? But we have, uh, we're partnering with brand at key moment when we bring new technology to market to bring them, quote unquote, uh, in the right way. 
Uh, why? Because a lot of, of what is happening right now is a lot of you know, startups and, and companies are talking about their objective in sustainability, but sometimes it's difficult to, to actually go to market and do it and implement and, and do what they say. So when we partner with a brand like Tory Burch, um, what we, the first thing we do is we educate on what we are and what we're not. Uh, because today for us, this is a bio replacement, but we have innovation which we consider bio better or bio best. What does it mean? Bio replacement is something that does the same thing as incumbent that are either animal derived or, or petrochemical, uh, and we are better. But are we, are we fundamentally exceptional? No, we're not. The bio better is better to the best of the incumbent. And the bio best is obviously something that is an innovation that not only provides performance and sustainability at scale to the nth level, and we have few of those. This is the, the first iteration, our first go to market. So this is a partnership that we're doing with Limanta and Tory Burch. So Limanta is obviously the manufacturing uh, operator that helps us produce the, 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 the material at scale, tweak it at scale. What was interesting with the brand is that, first of all, they're like, okay, we wanna, really want to do it. It's not a capsule collection. It's not like we're not going through the back door. We're going through the iconic product, and we're doing the entire collection with this material. So we had three sizes, seven colors. Uh, we have the summer three size, five colors, and then there's another six for fall, and there's another eight for spring, or whatever it is. So um, again, those are done by Lamanta through the same technology platform, but the designer and the company were like, okay, we're, we're gonna say to people really that this is the future alternative material that we wanna use for the brand. They put an entire marketing campaign that you can see here, uh, part of it, um, so that um, the, the, the customer um, understood what was going on. The other thing is we provided data. We have LCA, which is life cycle analysis, for any material that we go to market with that is um, um, and in the facilities. We do it based on the facility in which it is produced. So the brand feels comfortable when they say what they say because they know what, it, what the percentage. This is 64% bio content. It's not 72, it's not 52, it's 64. And it is USDA certified. So we try specifically in the US where regulation is a little bit different, um, we try to provide enough education, data, and certification to the brand for them to feel comfortable to claim what they're doing and why they're doing it. Um, and this is our commitment to to all of the first, uh, you know, the brands that are going to go and, and basically come out with the, the for the first time with any of our technological platform. Okay, thank you. So I think we've got time for for one more question, and so. If we're looking at partnerships of the future, mm -hmm. and that's very much what this event is about, right? Putting like-minded people together and seeing what they can do. Who are you, who do you want to engage in conversations? What, what does the partner of the future look like? So we, we, we believe we are um, enablers, matter of speaking. So we have, actually, we are working on partners you know, uh, I would say uh, higher in the value chain and lower in the value chain. We are kind of stuck in, like we're positioned in the middle, matter of speaking. So we are uh, talking to multiple companies that do have uh, feedstock that they don't know what to do with. Uh, that is a, either 100% recycled or, or else. And by, with our technology allow them to basically say, we have this, but nobody is kind of wanting it. Uh, for example, we are one of the biggest bio-PU consumer because bio-PU at 70% has limited technical and mechanical properties and is rather expensive. We provide, we compensate for the mechanical uh, weakness of bio-PU and we make it affordable through our technology. So we work with supplier, if you want a feedstock, and, and we actually work with them to develop new one, either from recycling or else, to find a venue to go to market. The same way we are identified partners, I've mentioned Limonta, I've mentioned Syntex, uh, Ultrafabric, but many more in the different industries in which we're gonna, uh, we're gonna go, we are going. For example, we are working, um, we're gonna be working with tanneries as well, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, doing only the dyeing and the finishing uh, part with those guys. Um, and again, constantly working through different type of industrial process, existing infrastructure, inf infrastructural process, so we don't have to reinvest in steel or, or in labor or move labor, but to move this economy in the, in the direction which is, we hope, a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, great. 
Okay, well, we could sit here for probably quite a bit longer, um, but it's time to wrap that up. So, Catherine, thank you very much for that brief insight into uh, Modern Meadow. And I'm sure there's some interesting feedstock uh, people in yeah. the audience and in the, uh, the hall who would be happy to have a meeting with you. But, thank you. Um, thank you very much for your time, and uh, yeah, have a nice rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you.